Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. This is Tableau Interactive Gift Map. I'm Glenn Kendall with Concourse Hosting, and also with me today is Holly Kendall. Hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with GoToWebinar, what you'll want to do is take the question section that's um, there under the Wombat um, and pop that out so that you can be able to interact and ask questions of us uh, while the webinar is going on. And then you'll want to go ahead and hit that arrow to collapse the control panel back down again. So that way you can have the maximum screen real estate to see what it is that we're doing. Um, we go back and forth in terms of who is uh, doing the webinar. So today, Hale is going to be driving the bus uh, in creating the interactive GIF map. Um, so the, this is the things that we're going to cover. We're going to start with um, a constituent cross tab, just putting some basic information in there as far as GIF data. And for those of you who have been to some of our previous web webinars, you'll probably recognize some of the stuff we'll be putting into that cross tab kind of pulling the same ideas that we've been working on over the past couple of weeks. Exactly. Uh, a lot of what we're doing just builds and, you know, uh, grows uh, over time. And so the more webinars that you attend, the more you'll be able to, you know, put the bits and pieces together and, and do more and more things. Uh, then we're going to jump in with maps in Tableau and we're big fans of Mapbox. So we're going to show you how to connect Mapbox with Tableau and how easy that is to do. And then we're going to put it all together with actions in a dashboard. All right. So then let's get started. So while we're going, uh, again, we'll go ahead and field questions as we're going along here. So if you see something you have a question about, just go ahead and type it in um, to the box, and we will, you know, take your questions as we go. Mm -hmm. So we are currently using Tableau 10.3, which has fun, like, extra things that you can do. You can now connect to PDF, which is fantastic. Dropbox. And Dropbox is another great connector that you can use. But today we're going to still be keeping it simple. Probably in a future webinar we'll be showing you PDF stuff. But for today we'll just be connecting to Tableau Server as usual to the sample data site. And we will be connecting to the, let's see if I can click here, the GIF data source. There we are. So many things with GIFs. All right. So for those of you that have Tableau with us, what we've done is created a data source that mirrors Razor's Edge gift query. So the fields and options that are available to you within Razor's Edge as far as putting together a query, those same fields are in this data source. And so before we get started building, I'm going to ask for a little bit of interaction from you, the audience, just so I can gauge uh, how experienced you are with Tableau Desktop and how slow I need to do some of my explanations. Can you just write in a, your level of experience with Tableau Desktop, whether you're brand new, been using it for a year, couple years, six months? We have one person that's six months, <clears throat> another one is brand new, and it looks like some of the other options or, or some of the other responses back are, are in that range as well. Yeah. All right. So yeah, a lot of new people I'm seeing joining us today, so we'll try to keep it slow with the explanations here. And actually, 
kind of before I even jump in with building, I'll just give like a quick one minute overview of what we're looking at right here in the Tableau building space. So when Tableau looks at your data, it divides it based on two different categories. The first category is it's looking at whether it's a dimension or a measure, which is Tableau's way of saying, is it a number? which is measures to kind of see gift amount, level of detail, that's a number. If I look in some of these tables here, amount bills, amount coins, gift amount, receipt number, receipt amount, all numbers. If we look over here in the dimensions, if I go to gift information, we can see we have, you know, acknowledged date, bank name, check date, constituency, date added. These are all categories of things. The second way Tableau sorts information is by coloring it. Either blue, which you can see here in dimensions, for the most part, these will be blue, and in measures, for the most part, these will be green. There'll be some exceptions, like here we have one exception. And so if something is blue, it means it is a discrete value, and if something is green, it means it is a continuous value. So 99% of the time, dimensions will be in blue and measures will be in green, but sometimes you will need a discrete measure or a continuous dimension. Awesome. And if that doesn't make, you know, total sense now, don't worry. As we're going along and building things, it'll start to become clearer. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first thing we like to do is go and take this field, gift date, fiscal year, and so it gives us a date range that we're working with. For some people who have very large databases, uh, if you just start dropping down information without a date range, it can sometimes be very long for Tableau to query all of that. So we're going to be filtering on gift date fiscal year. Um, I like to do relative date. So relative date gives us these little boxes to work with, and so it picks a date range in relation to where we are today. So in this case, we can do quarters, months, we can drill all the way down to minutes if we wanted to. But just for the purpose of How many gifts do we today, get in the last 10 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun to look at. But since we're using sample data, and our database is a not very comprehensive in sample data, we're going to be looking at the past year just so we can get a, a breadth of information happening. And it's fiscal year, so in the case of the sample data, the fiscal year is the same as the calendar year. With our data source, that fiscal year is a calculated field associated with the data source, and we automatically calculate what your fiscal year is based on your data in Razor's Edge. So there's no special thing that you need to do if you have Tableau with us. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and make your own calculated field and then change the fiscal year um, if you want to show them how to do that. Yeah, here we can do that. Here, go. So you can, you can enter, uh, default properties. Yeah. You can go default properties here all the way down to the bottom, fiscal year start, and then you can either specify it by the data source, which is what we've done for the calculated field, or if you want to manually select when your fiscal year is, you can go ahead and select whenever that date applies to you. Perfect. Okay. So by default, when you add a filter in Tableau, it adds it to this shelf here, but you can't actually see what it's doing. For this workbook, I want to be able to see what the filter is doing, so I'm going to show the filter. And since we'll be making a couple different worksheets, I'm also going to click on the filter and say apply to all worksheets using this data source. All right. You'll see in, as we make more worksheets how that applies. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's get some constituent names down here. So since we're looking at interactive gift map, I want to see within the date range we have set who has given us gifts. And I also think I want to see you know, how, how much those gifts are, of course. So name, constituent information. Quite a lot of names here. You can see all, all they did, she just double clicked on that and Tableau automatically added it to the sheet. 
which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm also going to add gift amount. We made a calculated field here called gift amount level of detail. Actually, I think we can show this calculation, can't we? You can say edit copy. Copy, and we can show that. Uh, basically, what this is doing is making sure that we are not double counting some gifts. Is the shorthand way of saying it. Yeah. So level of detail is an important feature that Tableau has. If you have, um, you know, when you're counting certain kinds of things, and just the way that that gifts are recorded in Razor's Edge, um, it's not just Razor's Edge. It can be other things as well. Like if you're counting, you know, orders, and you have items within an order. Um, it's sort of similar to that. So Tableau has created this thing called level of detail that you need to use when you're doing summing of those totals. So don't stress out about it. Just know that it's, it's a thing, it exists, and it, that you need to use it. Um, here's the calculation. So you can make your own by just doing the same kind of thing that we're doing here, basically associating the gift ID with the gift amount using this formula. And um, otherwise, you can just use the calculated field if you have Tableau with us, and uh, it just it figures it all out for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to hit undo since I don't want that copy sitting around here. I'm going to take that, and you can either double click or drag and drop it. Notice how if I drag and drop it here to the rows, it looks a little funny. It's trying to give me bars within gift amounts. So in this case, we want it in the columns. If you want to see bars of amounts, that's a totally fine way to look at this. I am kind of just a fan of reading numbers. So instead, I'm going to drag this to label. So this just makes the numbers appear here as text, which is fine. But I'm kind of finding this a bit hard to be able to sort by you know, how much someone is given. I just kind of have to scroll through and pick out large numbers as I read them, which is not a very practical way uh, to find constituent amounts. So I'm also going to take giving level, and I'm going to see if I can drop this before the constituent name. So this is also a calculated field that we've made. Uh, it's a fairly easy if-else-if statement. Here's a copy of that. It basically is just showing amounts from up to $10, 10 to 100. Let's see if I can make this a bit bigger to read it. Um, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000, 100,000 to a million, and above a million. So that way we can also get a sense of how much each constituent is giving just by doing a quick glance. What we can also do, kind of spread some of this out. Now, we have a scroll bar here in our crosstab because, once again, we're looking at an entire year's worth of information. Right now, this is okay because we're not going to be spending too much time just looking at this entire crosstab. Mm -hmm. All right. What I'm also going to do is get some gift information going. So I want to get the gift type, if I can read this, and also filter on that. So when we add a filter here, we can select what fields we want. I'm going to say all, and then pick up, pick recurring. Other one. Pay cash. Whoops, I can read. What happens when you have terrible eyesight? No pledge, no MG pledge. There we go. We're going to apply that as well. We're going to show the filter. So in this case, because it's kind of a short list of things, the filter is showing multiple values that we can select here, just kind of as checkboxes. Um, I'm going to change this rather than being in a list form to a drop-down form just so that way it's, it's more condensed, it's not taking up as much real estate within the viz. So gift type is one of those things that, you know, 99 times out of 100, you're going to want to throw that onto your worksheet. 
just because whoever it is that's using it, they're going to want to be sure that they're counting or not counting certain kind of gift types. And, and by putting that in there, they can see and have control over exactly you know, what's included in there. And the last thing I'm going to do, just because this text is small and I have very bad eyesight, is we're just going to format this a little bit, make it easier to read. So right now we're looking at nine point font, which is way too small for my eyes. So 14 point, which I find to be much more legible. Then what I'm also going to do is just change some color in here. There's some row banding which is this alternating white and gray that you see here. I think I'm just going to change the color to something a little more pleasant to look at on both of those. Just a pale blue. A bit easier on my eyes. Then what we can also do is do we want to bold anything? Mm, maybe, maybe the money. Maybe the money here. Uh, see how we can do this. Uh, just highlight oh, that's probably column. true. Better idea. Yeah. Just do click, shift click. Oh, why don't you want to shift click for me? Do I have to do a drag click for you? I think so. Yep. <laughs> Since it doesn't have a highlight header, does it? Right? Yeah, try that. There's no header. Ooh. Oh well. Okay. If I I think that will just do the ones I've selected, I believe. I'll try it. Yeah, we'll see how this works. Pain, bold. Yep. Oh god. I think you think it does all this. Got them all. Nice. Cool. All right. Maybe move the left. Yeah, let's, a little so we can read we're going to bring that out just so we have some more legibility. And as we build the dashboard, we'll be able to adjust this as well so we get more exact ranges going. All right, so I'm going to name this list of constituents. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to make a map. Yeah, I heard that uh, that's, there's going to be a map in today's webinar. Yeah, it's an interactive map. Let's get to the map. Okay. So we are a fan of using a map box with Tableau. And I think actually we have map box open here, which is basically a map background that you can add in to Tableau. So we just have a map box account. There free and easy to make. So we go to mapbox.com, we have logged in, and then we can look at different styles of maps, just kind of based on a preference of what you want to see. Yeah, so you can, any one of you can sign up for a free Mapbox account. This is just the default stuff that they give you when you log in, and you don't have to worry about paying for it because unless you're having, you know, a ridiculous number of views you would have to pay for it, but just for, you know, get started playing with Tableau, even if everyone at your organization was using it, it would still be probably at the free level. So, Right, so there's a couple of different styles I think would be good for us to use since we're trying to see, you know, where constituents are located within the United States. I at least want to be able to see streets. You could also do traffic day if we want to concentrate on a particular area. Uh, for the purposes of today's webinar, we'll just be using streets. And it's pretty straightforward. You just select the style that you want, and then we go to Tableau. And what's really nice is it gives us an integration URL that we can just copy, or copy with Control-C here. And it also gives us instructions on how to use it. So, Yeah, again, you don't have to worry about what any of this is doing, just like copy it to the clipboard. It's just put gobbledygook here. So all that stuff just goes in your clipboard and then go back into Tableau. Mm -hmm. and all right, so this says go to map, map backgrounds, map services, add map box. That sounds easy enough. 
So back in Tableau, map, background map, map services, adding map services. I see map box, and then that gobbledygook URL we have, we paste right in here, and we can name it if we want to. I'll call it streets, I guess. Okay. And that is it. So, we need to generate latitude and longitude. And this is the map box, that background that we've added. So it doesn't look like a whole lot right now because we're very zoomed out, although it is some fun colors. But the more we zoom in, in this case we'll go up here to Washington, since we're Seattle-based, we can see, all right, major highway details and cities are already popping up, as well as geography. Keep zooming in, get major streets, keep zooming in all the way, you get neighborhoods and minor streets. We can go all the way to get tiny, tiny streets happening. You dub. <laughs> and we can show you our offices right up here. We're just north of Seattle in City Linwood, mm -hmm. Washington. This empty gray spot is Concourse. Woo! All right. So now that we have a map going, we obviously need to fill the map with useful information. So if we want to look at where our constituents are located, we first need to put in some geography values. So the first thing we want to look at is probably state. We can also do country as well, but we're going to go to constituent address. And I'll start with state. State is probably fine. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to double click. I'm going to drag and drop it onto the marks card. Uh, if I were to double click, we can do country as an example here. Oh, now that I've added state, I guess we're fine. Notice here by adding country to detail as well. We had a little dot here in British Columbia pop up. But if you don't first drag it onto this marks card and double click, it will put itself up here into the rows and then you would have multiple maps going on. All right, so we have country and we have state. Which is pretty good. I think we also want city. That's what we're looking at here. See if actually if we remove you, what will happen? I think you want to keep the state. Just oh, so. country is what I meant. Since we're just looking at yeah. U.S. All right. Uh, I'm kind of finding the blue circles also a little bit hard to see on this. So I'm just going to change the color so they can stand out. Uh, I'm going to make them bright red with a black border just so they pop bit more. Um, maybe move the questions thing up so you can see that filter. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm going to drag our little questions box up for a moment. So notice that when I have added state and city to the map, there's this little box that appears. So this is saying that there are unknown geographic locations. So all you have to do is click on the box and you have the option to edit the locations. So we see errors on both the state and province level, as Tableau doesn't understand what null city uh, is. We have a data quality issue here. Mm -hmm. Somebody put null for the state to mm -hmm. That's what happens to the sample data. And we also have some unrecognized locations, null an unrecognized location. So unrecognized could be either it has no idea where the city is or there could be multiple cities of the same name and it doesn't know which one to choose. So what do we do to rectify this problem? Mm -hmm. I think we can just not worry about it and skip these. Okay, so there's two solutions that you can use when you're faced with a problem like this. Thing number one is to do what Glenn just suggested, which was 
we can close up this box and you can right click on this and hit hide indicator. And then you don't have to worry about it because you can't see the errors Outside anymore. Out of mind. Outside out of mind. Another option that you can do is you can go in and edit the locations. And you can actually enter in. Say Allendale. That really is. Yeah. So you can tell it either to Allendale to co coordinate with an already existing city that Tableau recognizes, or you could Google where Allendale is and enter in the exact latitude and longitude location of Allendale. If you have like maybe two cities that don't match up, that could work fine. Not too much of a time waster. But once you get into the realm of 15 or really 10 or more, it's best just to hide yeah. that. All right, I'm going to drag my questions box back down to the bottom here. So any questions about any of this so far? They're all riveted. OK. We shall soldier on. All right. Is there anything else you want to add to the map right now? Uh, the dots could be a little bigger, maybe? I think so. So in that case, we just go over to side, drag that up. There's like two little lines here that are kind of indicating what a good size would be. If it's smaller than the bottom line, they can be very hard to see. And if they're bigger than the top line, it means they have severe overlapping that's occurring. So I do. Uh, I kind of like the overlap. Kind of like the overlap too, but I think these ones are fine. I think if you have a situation where there are a lot of different constituents, um, you know, we probably don't want to get too big, otherwise it'll be very difficult to pick those constituents out. We have a question. Does this work with zip code? Why it does work with zip code. So instead of having city here, which, you know, this makes sense, especially if you have a lot of alumni, for case of a university, or just a lot of donors concentrated in one area. City isn't going to be very helpful because you could have multiple people in the city. What we can do is drop zip code down, and we can just remove city, and it will just look at the zip code. And, wow, would you look at that? The existing dots have shifted very slightly, and some new dots have popped up as well. And this is also another solution if you find that Wow, Tableau isn't recognizing some of these remote cities in the middle of nowhere, Washington. Right. And some of it might be just sample data. Yeah. That it's just a made-up name. Who knows? It could be. Yeah. So zip code can also be very helpful. So we'll, we'll leave it at, at zip code here. I think that's fine. Yeah, let's stick with zip code. That's good. I think for the map itself, this is probably good. Probably, well, we'll come back and maybe adjust the uh, tool tip yeah. after we've started on our dashboard here. Okay. So list of constituents, I'll call this map of constituents. And, and, you know, right at this stage, we're not really looking at much. We just know that there is, in fact, constituents at these locations. Right. Gifts were given. But we don't know who they are, and we don't know how much. And that's what we want to accomplish with the dashboard. Uh, let's maybe take a look at those filters back on the first worksheet. Oh, that's true. This sure one I did not apply. Filters. Notice, and this is one good way to tell if you have a filter that is applying to all your worksheets. It has this little data source icon next to it. It has the data source icon next to it, it means, and if I hover over it, it says applies to all worksheets with the same data source. In this case, all worksheets that we're using right now. This one is not the case. We want to change that, so I click on this, go apply to worksheets, all using this data source, and then it also gets the little icon here. Okay, and so notice a few of our dots have disappeared, at least the one over here in Spokane, Washington, definitely disappeared. A few less dots over here in the East Coast, so an important filter. Yeah, so that way it's consistent. Exactly. So now we're going to go to New Dashboard. And this is where we put those two different worksheets that we've built together. So what I'm first going to do, and it's going to look 
a little bit clunky as we first start building it. I'm going to take the list of constituents and dump it here in all of its very long scroll bar glory. I'm going to go and hide the title. These are, you know, I think it's pretty self-explanatory um, what we're looking at here. And I'm also going to change our gift type to floating and our gift date fiscal year filter also to floating. So when you're building dashboards in Tableau Desktop, you kind of have two different options of how you know your worksheets and their filters can behave. You can either make them piled, in which case they move in a very boxy, regimented like feel, or you can make them floating where they're free form and I can drag and drop them as I want. So generally you'll find that you'll be using a mix of tiled objects, mostly for your worksheets, and floating objects for your filters, or maybe a title. Okay. So now in this case, our list of constituents is taking up all of the space, so I'm going to actually move these guys up top, because what I'm going to do now is drop the map of constituents below it. And so you can kind of see it highlights over the area in which I can drop the map of constituents. I only have four spots right now, but we can rectify that as we keep going. All right, so let's bring out the map a little bit. Kind of like having the map be big. Zoom in a little bit on the map. And center that a bit. And then what I'm going to do is place an object on the dashboard. So you can kind of create like blank spaces basically in the These dashboard. Are containers. They're called containers. So you can put multiple worksheets in a container. True. So what I'm going to do is kind of create a container. I understand that my filters are floating, but just to kind of keep them within this container. There's a few different places I can drop it. I'm going to drop it here in the corner and also now give the, my worksheet something that it can adjust against as well. Yeah. So we're going to drag that down. Drag that down here. And if I select this worksheet, we go fit width. See if that changes anything. All righty. So notice that we can't seem to see the numbers. So what I can do then is shrink this down a bit. Details, details. On this side. There we go. Mm -hmm. And have that adjust appropriately on the dashboard. Just why I had mentioned earlier that like formatting in the beginning matters a bit, but we kind of have to wait to see what's happening here in the dashboard before you know we settle into any solid formatting. So then I'm going to drag these guys down below. And I'm going to get rid of the name of Map of Constituents because I think it's pretty obvious what's happening there. Let's see if I can add, drag this guy over a bit. And I'm also going to add text to this. I'm going to drag my text over here to the top part of this container. And we'll keep this a Tableau book, but we're going to make this quite big. Then we're going to call this the interactive gift map. All right. So we have our title. We have our filters here. And so now we actually need to make this dashboard useful because right now we're still looking at just a very long list of names and a map. A map of dots. So we're going to be adding dashboard actions to this. So we go up to Dashboard, and we select Actions, and we are going to add an action. And we want to add an action that's a filter action, so when I do this action, it's going to filter the dashboard and create a result based off of that filter. So in this case, since the purpose of this map is really just to see what donors came from where, and just looking at the amount those donors have given, we're not going to be 
you know, really, really specific with a date range that we're looking at. We set the date range within our filter, and then we are going to interact with the map for the cross tab to adjust based on that. So this means our source sheet, this is the thing we interact with that causes a change. Well, the thing we interact with. Target sheet is the thing that the change happens to. So in this case, we want a list of constituents to adjust based on how we interact with the map of constituents. In this case, we want the action to run on hover, which means anytime I move my mouse over one of those red dots, the list of constituents is going to change accordingly. I also want to have clearing the selection will leave the filter. This means if I hover over something and then move my mouse off of it, the selection still stays. It will only change when I move my mouse over another red dot. And I'm going to call this, what should we name this filter? Um. Map to constituents, maybe? Map. I'll just call this map to cross tab. There you go. I think it's a good idea to always give your filter some easily recognizable name rather than just defaulting it to filter one. Because if you have multiple filters, you'll have filter one, filter two, filter three. And you go to edit them, and you have no idea what you're looking at. True. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to leave map to cross tab on hover. We're going to hit OK. So what this means is if I hover over different names, the cross tab is going to adjust accordingly. And that is why I kind of left the list of constituents just as is with a lot of names with the big scroll bar, because as we're using it in the dashboard, it doesn't matter too much. All right. I'm also realizing that we probably want to set our uh, fiscal year before our gift type. So I'm going to put that on top. And so for the purposes of this webinar, we have our fiscal year set to previous year just because our sample data is so small. Mm -hmm. For those of you who have real data and you're building an interactive gift map with real data, you're going to want to choose, of course, date range that are much more applicable to you. This uh, dashboard works really well if you're just choosing either previous week or previous month, I would say at the most. You don't want to get too big of a date range because otherwise you're going to have um, a bunch of just filters in here. All right, so one other thing I'm going to change is that notice when I hover over something, the tooltip props up with a bunch of kind of extra information that is not super helpful. Like, I think it's fine to see the state and it's fine to see the zip code, but I don't need it to tell me what the state and zip code actually is. I think those are self-explanatory. So we have to go back to this worksheet and click on tooltip. And what I'm just going to do is delete the descriptive text in front of state and zip code. There we go. Leave that blank. That way when we go back to the dashboard, it says the state and it just says the zip code without any kind of extra explanation as to what those are. So we have a question about filter action. How do we clear the filters and resume to the original? That's a very good question. So, based on how we currently have the filters, we don't actually have a way to clear it. We should probably add something that yeah, does that. I think, um, I think there's a couple of ways we can handle this. Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things that you want to decide how you want the visualization to work. So, I think in this case, um, you know, we've chosen to, to keep the filter in effect. 
And I think, you know, another thing you can do is maybe make another worksheet or something like that that clears the filter off. Uh, actually, I would on it. say there, there's a, two things we can do here. Yeah. One, if you want to clear the filter and look at the entire gift map together, what we can do is just add a second action that will effectively do nothing but clear our selection. Oh, that's so what we can do is go to Dashboard, Actions, we're going to add an action, and we're going to add a filter action. And so I want the source sheets, in this case, we can keep it either on both of them or just one. It depends on your preference. In this case, I'll keep it as both, and it will target both. And it'll run on, we'll do select. Okay. Okay. And then, actually, instead of maybe making it run on map, because I feel like that will get confusing, we'll do it from the list of constituents, but it will target both sheets. Mm -hmm. So by selecting something and then clearing it, it will show, actually, we can just say clearing the selection will exclude all values. It's kind of two ways you can do this. If we have show all values, you would have to double select something, basically. Mm -hmm. in order for all the values to go back to normal. Or you can select something and have everything go back to how it was, I believe. Mm -hmm. Clear. No. I can spell things. I'll just call this clear dashboard. Hopefully that is a straightforward enough name. Mm -hmm. And we will see what happens here. So if I were to select this, load, and then clear everything. Nope. So we do not want it to be clear. I want it to be select. OK. That's what we do. I think, yep. That shows all values on here. Doesn't want to show all values on the oh right because do, 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 do. I think then if we hover over something but then hover and click it will give us everything there we go okay so it's kind of a hinky way to do it I mean you I think you need to think of the end user when you're doing it so you don't want to make it confusing and so that to me is not intuitive to do that to like I'm hovering but then I have to click to get it all back again so I would probably try to figure out a way to make a button or, or something like that to, to go back but uh, I think it just depends on what you want the map to do I mean the other option is if you go back to those actions is that um, so go to map to cross tab mm -hmm is that instead of leaving the filter, you can show all values again. Which is true. It's probably the easy way to do that. But the problem I would say with that is if you wanted to like go and then select Mary Beth Richardson in this case, right. you can't do that. Right. So. As soon as you move your mouse off, then it shows everything again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a choice that I think you want to make in terms of how you want the, the thing to work. And so it's one of those things where it's probably better to just have it do one thing and have it work one way and not get too crazy with adding too many options to things as I would prefer to opt for something that's just simple. Mm -hmm. I'd say one other thing you can do is kind of the same principle of what I did here in Actions, which is clear dashboard. Um, while I basically made this run so you can click on either sheet, and it will clear. And the reason it didn't work when it was just running on list is if the list has already been selected that only one name is there, it doesn't matter how many times you try to clear it, it will always be one name, is that rather than having it interact with the same two worksheets that we're looking at now, you can make a third worksheet and just put a button type thing on it. And you could drop said button. I'm actually going to remove clear dashboard here. And you could drop the button down on the worksheet. And so when you interact with it, which is just a select action, right. the dashboard will reset. So go, go back to change the, that action. Back yeah, I'm going to. 
yeah, I'll go change this back to leave the filter. And then but I, mean, I want to show people to uh, so go ahead and now hover over something. Then go back to the worksheet, the list of constituents worksheet. I think I hovered over someone else. That's all right. Um, so you see when it says it's filtering, it actually adds a filter. So see there's the two filters we had before, but then it actually adds that third filter. Um, so this is the filter. So when it's saying it's filtering, it's not doing some hidden thing that you can't see. I mean, you can't see it on the dashboard because we haven't added it to the dashboard, but um, but that's how it's, it's happening. It's adding that to the worksheet, this filter. All right, long answer, but a really good question. Um, go, you want to go back to the dashboard and see if there's any other questions people have about this? Here, I will rename this while people are thinking of questions here. All right, everyone, so this is the interactive gift map. Hope you all found this informative. Uh, we'll stick around for a few more minutes to answer any last minute questions you guys have. Thank you very much for attending. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us today.